They came to my home at one of the most difficult times in my life, one of the most difficult times in my husband's life. We lived in a home that required you to walk up a full flight of stairs to get to the car. He was incredibly weak from months of chemo and radiation treatments and um, couldn't do it. They kept him home. They made his, his passing, his journey, as easy as it could be and were incredibly gentle with my heart at the same time. All of our patients are homebound. That's the first hurdle they have to go over when they call for services. How are you having difficulty getting to your doctor's office? They virtually all have multiple chronic conditions. The median age is 83. That's the median, so half of them are over 83. I feel it's so special and so much of an honor to, be, to help families and the patient themselves be there at the end of their life. So I think that, that that's one of the things that I think is just really great about this job. There are thousands of individuals out there that are homebound. They don't get the care that they need and it does cost our community. Elder care, it's really about function and you can't really assess an elder's function unless you see them in their own environment. Um, and you can see them a lot more often than, they can, than their family will be able to get them out to a doctor's office. That, I think, was his biggest concern, that he was going to have to be somewhere away from his home. They made it possible for him to stay there. They checked on him every day. They, his pain was controlled so that he was comfortable. I was raised by my grandparents, so they were like parents to me. So when I see an older patient now, it feels like I'm taking care of my grandparents. To be able to see an individual at 90 and, and how much of a rich life that they've lived, you know, and then to be able to care for them at the end of their life is just really, I think, it's an honor. My first patient came to me uh, as a referral from a friend of a friend who had some dementia but was still with it enough to walk and talk and be very cranky, had refused to leave her house for 10 years. These are your mothers, your fathers, your grandmothers, your grandfathers. These are people that we need to take care of. After just three months, I had over 100 patients and only then began to realize the magnitude of the need. He would joke and laugh with Rebecca when she came. They developed this incredible bond and she was probably the only other person he saw besides me. And it was the gift that she brought to him in her kind and, and caring and, and listening to him and learning about him and how he, it, it was amazing. From the beginning, part of our mission was not to refuse services to anyone for inability to pay. And we still honor that. As a result, almost half our patients are below the poverty level. From the time we added our hospice three years ago, we have risen from about 30 staff to almost 80 just over the past four years. The population is aging, more people are living to be old, and many of those people have multiple chronic conditions. I think that the office-based system of delivery of primary care is not really viable for a patient population that is having such great difficulty going to a doctor's office. Not everybody can get out and go to a doctor. Elderly, people like my husband who were too weak to get up and go, I will never be able to repay them for what they did for Billy and for me. And if any little thing I could do that would be helpful for them, I am happy, happy to do.